Hi everybody, Matt Yankovic, Haas, Head of Open Source Strategy here at Percona with another week that was in the blog roundup. We're going to be showing you all of the awesome things that were on the Percona blog, show you some news articles that came out this week, keep you all informed on the news you may have missed. So jumping right in, if you haven't seen the new articles on Percona's blog, let's go through a few of them. So the first one up is from Sergey Pronin, who was on the Haas Talks FOSS a couple weeks ago. And he was talking Kubernetes, of course, back then, and he's back talking about databases as a service on Kubernetes and giving you the 411 on what's underneath the hood. So if you're interested in Kubernetes and database as a service, running your own database as a service, this is a blog that you're going to love. So I would recommend that big time. Now, our CEO and founder, Peter Zaitsev, is talking about installing Percona Monitor and Management on Linode. So if you're running Linode and want to know how to do it, and it is an easy process because it is available from the Linode Marketplace, it is an interesting and good quick brief um, uh, refresher on how to do that. Now, uh, we've got a couple webinars coming up. Uh, if you hadn't seen, we did have a pretty big presence at FOSTEM. We're waiting for the videos to come out from that. But I want to thank you for attending FOSTEM. I did write up my favorite sessions from the weekend before they happen. I'm going to follow this up later on this week with what I really enjoyed during the week at FOSTEM, or the weekend at FOSTEM, uh, what I actually got to sit down and watch. Um, really uh, positive uh, experience there. And I want to thank all the organizers at FOSTEM for that conference. It was awesome. Thank you for listening there. Now, of course, we had a webinar last week on PMM uh, identifying and troubleshooting problematic queries. So uh, the Q&A for that, if you did ask a question, is up on our website. Also, for those out there in the community, if you run, maintain, or are passionate about an open source project, we just launched Percona Live Community Rooms. This is very similar to the dev rooms at FOSTEM, where if you have a community of people and you would like four hours of sessions that you can fill with community members to talk about open source or database topics or cloud topics, contact me. Uh, there's a link on our website in our blog about that. Um, and so that I would really appreciate it if you guys are interested, if you come on out and hang out with us. So Peter also followed up the news that just won't die, which is the SSPL. So Peter wrote a blog last year, very popular on why the SSPL is bad for you. And so he has updated that now with the most recent Elastic News and the news that AWS is forking into the open distro into a uh, open source version. Also, again, another request for help. If you haven't seen, I've done some videos on this already, but uh, we are looking for uh, feedback on some of our software. So there are a couple new surveys out there. If you can take one minute to answer one of them, it would really, really help us they are five, six questions each, very short. So that's the new stuff on Percona's website, but let's look at some of the more interesting ones that are out there. And last week I talked about, um, you know, Jesper's new book, uh, MySQL Concurrency, a little bit. He's back with MySQL Query Attributes, which is uh, something that's kind of interesting, and I would definitely encourage you, if you're looking for metadata about your queries, and be able to tag those so you can go back and find them, he has a really good write-up on that it's something worthwhile to check out. Um, this one is actually going to be my blog of the week because it's kind of a cool feature. We're talking Postgres 14. It just seems like 13 just came out, but Postgres 14 is out there. So um, if you want to take a look at this uh, article from uh, Peter, Peter Eisentrout, uh, he has put together this article on two features, which are the inclusion of search and cycle clauses. Now, the cycle clause has me kind of intrigued because the cycle clause, his example is, is doing a game that I like, which is Ticket to Ride, but it uh, gives you an easier way to figure out the cycle down a tree structure. And so it's kind of cool. Uh, so I would uh, definitely encourage you to take a peek at that if you're interested. Um, other interesting article of the week from the folks over at Cybertech. Uh, what is a checkpoint? So this is a question that people probably don't realize what it is and they're kind of afraid to ask. So um, great that uh, Hans uh, Jorgen uh, actually put together this article. I think it could help some more people. Now from moving outside the blog space, um, uh, interesting article here on how much open source developers are really worth. 
Okay, so all of you out there in open source land, evidently we're all worth hundreds of billions of dollars. How many of you see those hundreds of billions of dollars? Probably not a lot, but you know, hey, it looks like this is why open source is becoming so popular as a quote unquote business model. Uh, yes, it shouldn't be, but you know, hey, if, if open source developers are bringing in hundreds of billions of dollars, what are we gonna do to fix that? Uh, so it might get into the hands of some of you developers out there. That would be a good thing. Yes, indeed. But evidently, economists say open source is really driving the economies of the world. So, hey, good for us. Now, we've also got Google releasing a new cybersecurity tool, um, you know, and it helps to identify uh, security bugs. So if, you know, you're, you know, writing code, you want to run this tool. I haven't used it yet. It's something to look into but it is something that they claim will help you uh, identify security bugs before you go into production. So good on them. Uh, DigitalOcean has done a survey. I love surveys. I love data, of course. And so they have the DigitalOcean impact of, you know, uh, or the open source survey. And they're saying that there was a impact in 2020 on open source and that the number of people contributing to projects decreased. So we were all at home. But um, evidently, open source wasn't on our minds, according to the survey. So um, that's something that is interesting. So if you want to take a look at the survey results, DigitalOcean has a write-up on those, um, you know, things. And you could see that, you know, um, some people have decreased, other people, you know, overall increased. So, you know, there, there's, some, there's some changes there. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, so go ahead, take a look at that one. Now, the dispute between Elastic and AWS will never die. It continues on, and today is no difference. There was more articles this week, right, on, you know, this, you know, clash of the titans, if you will. So who will win? Uh, it, you know, another interesting article about that. I talked about it at Faustim. Peter wrote his SSPL article. There's more articles than this, just this one. But it will is the story that isn't going to die at all. So speaking of not wanting to die at all, um, hey, another potential data leak over at Experian. So, you know, just what I want is more free credit monitoring. So congratulations on that. And this just in, you know, I know open source developers are making billions of dollars. But uh, evidently, the cloud providers are out there making hundreds of billions of dollars because... Uh, there is an expectation that the four major cloud providers will surpass 115 billion. Now, I wonder how much of that is on open source. Hmm, interesting question. Maybe we'll explore that in a Haas Talks FOSS later on. And while they're making money, evidently they're not actually making profit. You know, Google reported this week that they lost 5.6 billion this year. So if I lost 5.6 5, 5 billion this year, I don't know if I would still be welcomed into my house or into most businesses. But, you know, hey, we live in a weird world. So that is the blog and news roundup of the week. And I appreciate you hanging out there with us and check out the latest Haas on Foss podcast. Talk to you guys later.